If you really want a furniture project to look and feel glassy smooth, you need to know how to make gravy, and more importantly, how to use gravy to give a wood surface a beautiful finish. In this video, I'll show you an old technique that you can start using today and which will transform your next project. Some hardwoods have what's called open grain, large pores that give them a more textured surface than other woods, even after you sand them smooth. Oak, ash, walnut, and hickory are common examples. You can sand them all day long to as fine a grit as you like, but they will always have some texture that you can feel, and more importantly, see when the light hits the surface. Sometimes that's fine. It's wood, after all. It's supposed to be somewhat natural. But some projects, especially tables with surfaces that will catch a lot of light, or small items like boxes that people will pick up and handle, these just look and feel better with silky, smooth surfaces that are just hard to achieve with open grain hardwoods. To solve the problem, some folks just start putting on the varnish. They hope to fill in the wood pores and build up a thick layer over them. But too many coats of lacquer or polyurethane can just make things look and feel more plasticky than silky. A better solution is to fill those open pores before you apply your top coats of finish. And they do make chemical grain fillers for this purpose. But the old timers swore by their gravy. And many fine woodworkers today still prefer that old method because instead of filling the pores with a clear resin, the gravy is made from the wood itself. I learned this years ago from the late Charles Neal, and it's really simple. You'll need an oil-based finish. Anything that hardens will do. It doesn't even have to be the finish you intend to use for the rest of your project. If you have an old half can of glossy polyurethane or something you just want to get rid of, use it. It'll have no effect on the sheen you end up with when you put on your actual coats of finish later. You can even use boiled linseed oil or tongue oil as long as you give it enough time to cure when you're done. Now I'm just going to pour a puddle right in the middle of the board. Then I'm going to sand it. The type of sandpaper you use is important. It has to be something you can use wet. Cloth back sanding sheets or discs work well. And it has to be a relatively fine grit. I like 400 to 600. That fine grit will make very fine dust, and that's the key to a good gravy. The old timers would have done this by hand, and that's fine if you want a good workout. But unless you're doing a very small project, a random orbit sander will make much quicker work of it. Just keep in mind that some of the gravy might get on the sander and make it look messy, so you might have to clean it off. And if your sander has built-in dust suction, use sanding discs without holes. You don't want to pull the gravy into the sander itself. Notice the slurry or gravy that I'm making. This is the good stuff. A mix of oil and sawdust that will fill in those pores. You can use a spatula to spread it around and work it in. This will even fill small cracks and imperfections, but not large knots or gaps because it's still runny and it's going to shrink a little bit when it dries. After you spread it over the surface, wipe away the excess and then let it dry. Usually you'll want to use an oil-based finish over it. There are ways that you can put water-based finish over some oil-based gravy, depending on how you made it, but I'd recommend sticking to an oil-based top coat just to be safe. Here I've applied a nice satin sheen with two coats of wipe on poly. I wish you could feel how smooth this is. It's a lot nicer than you can get with fine grit sandpaper alone. This is white oak with some curly grain, and even in raking light, you can see how glassy the surface is. The next time you work with open grain hardwood, Try some gravy, at least on the surfaces that will be seen and touched the most. It'll make a big difference. You want to see something else that'll make a big difference in your shop? 3M says their Cubitron 2 sandpaper is a revolutionary advancement in abrasive technology. What makes Cubitron paper different is the grit is made up of ceramic pyramids, which slice the fibers of the wood rather than plowing troughs through them like the grain of the tiny rocks that are found on other sandpaper. The result is an abrasive that works faster and stays cooler, so it lasts longer, significantly longer, like five or six times longer than the cheap stuff, and about twice as long as even other premium sandpapers. 3M Cubitron 2 destroyed Mirka, Klingspor, all the brands that are generally considered to be really good stuff. The Cubitron genuinely lasts a lot longer. I assume it must keep it cooler, perhaps it optimizes the way it cuts. I, I honestly don't understand how it works. It just works better than any other sandpaper I've used. All I can say is try it. Just one pack, you'll see what I mean. And if you do, 
please use the link below this video, which is to a small family business, and that business is well worth supporting.